Hey guys, welcome back to One Stop Biology. So guys, in today's video, we are going to start off with productivity and decomposition. So if you remember, we have right now reached to chapter 40 of class 12, which is ecosystem. And in the last video, we saw what is the structure of ecosystem, what is the exact definition of ecosystem, functions of ecosystem, and then we saw the components of ecosystem as well. So the first two components of, of ecosystem are nothing but productivity and decomposition. So before we start off with the topic, guys, uh, yes, I have uh, a request to you. So if you uh, are able to understand the videos, please do like it and share it with your friends. And guys, your feedback is very, very important to me. So please keep giving your feedbacks, whether you have any problem, any doubts, or you want me to improve on the videos, that would be grateful. And guys, yes, if you're new to the channel, please do subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon to get all the updated videos that I'll be posting in the future. Okay, so let's start with productivity first. Let's see what is productivity. So uh, basically, when we talk about productivity, it means we are talking about the producers. Now, who are the producers? Now, we know that, you know, guys, in order to maintain the ecosystem, in order to maintain the entire intact ecosystem's function and to sustain it, there is a constant input of what? There is a constant input of solar energy, right? So if we are talking about the producers, there is a constant input of solar energy, which is a basic requirement for any ecosystem, right? Now, there is first primary production. Primary production. Now, what is primary production? So, basically, it is defined as the amount of biomass or the organic matter which is produced per unit area over a time period. Now, these are produced by plants during photosynthesis, right? So, basically, the, the food that they prepare, the organic matter that they prepare, right? The amount of that food, that organic matter, which is produced per unit area over a period of time by plants, right? So, how is it expressed? It is basically expressed in weight, right? In grams. Or it is also expressed in energy, as in kilocal or maybe in grams right now what is the rate so the rate of this biomass production is nothing but productivity so productivity is the rate of biomass production and how is this expressed this is expressed as the unit of primary production per year. So either it will be gram because it is per unit area, so per meter square per year or it will be kilo calorie per meter square per year. Right. So basically this is used to compare productivity in different ecosystems. Now, this can be divided into two types. This can be divided into gross, gross primary productivity and net primary productivity. Right. Now, this is GPP and this is NPP, okay? Now, this gross primary productivity is what? Gross primary productivity, right? So, gross primary productivity means what? Gross primary productivity means the productivity of an ecosystem, which is the rate of production of organic matter during photosynthesis so this is nothing but the rate of production of organic matter during photosynthesis
Now, what is net pro primary productivity? What is net primary productivity? So basically, now we say that a considerable amount of this gross primary productivity is utilized by plant itself because they respire. So a considerable amount of this gross primary productivity, the organic matter which is produced during photosynthesis is utilized by plants in respiration. So gross primary productivity minus this respiration loss, right? is net primary productivity so net primary productivity is gross primary productivity minus respiration loss right r is respiration loss right so this net primary productivity which is now there is available biomass for the consumption of all the herbivores and decomposers which are what heterotrophs right so now the comes concept of secondary productivity what is secondary productivity secondary productivity is the rate of formation of new organic matter by consumers so this is rate of formation of new organic matter by whom by consumers so that means there are two types right there are two types of productivity one is the primary one which is nothing but the organic matter which is produced per unit area by plants during photosynthesis now the secondary productivity is new organic matter which are formed by consumers right so basically primary productivity depends on the plant species right which are there in a particular area and it also depends on the variety of environmental factors like the availability of nutrients the photosynthetic cap capacity of plants right so it varies in different type of ecosystem now the annual net primary productivity Remember, guys, there is a data here which is given in NCRT. The annual, remember, the annual net primary productivity of the whole biosphere is 170 billion tons of. So, net primary productivity of what? Entire biosphere. is 170 billion tons this is dry weight of the organic matter right so despite occupying 70 percent of the surface this productivity of oceans right if i talk about the net primary productivity of oceans it is just 70 it is 55 sorry not 70 55 billion tons so rest out of 170 billion ton 55 billion ton is from oceans the rest is on land right now let's talk about the second topic which is decomposition so guys basically what happens is that like we have plants as producers we have various microbes, various animals as decompos decomposers, right? So these decomposers basically break down complex organic molecule, right? So they break down complex organic molecule into inorganic substances like say water, nutrients, carbon dioxide. And this process, this process itself is known as decomposition right now these dead plants remember that these dead plant remains such as leaves bark flowers or even you know dead remains of animals including even the fecal matter all of this constitutes what it constitutes the detritus so detritus is what all the dead right all the dead 
plant and animal remains right this is detritus now this is the raw material detritus is the raw material for decomposition you will have to remember this as well right now the important process the important process of decomposition there are various steps now what are the steps of decomposition the first one is fragmentation second is leaching third is catabolism fourth is humification humification and fifth is mineralization so there are five steps in the process of decomposition fragmentation leaching catabolism humification and then mineralization now detrite with detritus we have another word which is detritovores so all the animals like earthworm is an example of a detritovore these detritovores break down detritus into smaller particles and this process is known as fragmentation so what is happening first is we have detritus now this detritus is being broken down into smaller particles by the process of fragmentation and this is happening by detritovores right now what happens then the process of leaching happens then the process of leaching happens where water soluble inorganic nutrients go down into the soil horizon and they get precipitated as unavailable salts right so basically there are certain in so all the soluble inorganic nutrients which are present in the smaller particles they go down into the soil horizon and they get precipitated as unavailable salts right so this entire process is leaching right then we have certain bacteria and fungal enzymes which degrade the detritus into simpler inorganic substances this process is known as catabolism so basically catabolism is further breakdown further breakdown of the detritus into even simpler inorganic substances and this is done by bacterial and fungal enzymes right now you will see that all the above steps in decomposition all of these steps operate simultaneously on the detritus right so it is not happening one after another these are not steps all of this is happening simultaneously now after this what happens 
basically humification and mineralization that again together occur during decomposition in the soil so as it is get as the detritus is getting decomposed humification and mineralization both happen simultaneously right so humification and mineralization both happen during decomposition in the soil right so basically humification leads to what it leads to accumulation of dark colored amorphous substance which is known as humus it is known as humus right so this is highly resistant to microbial action and then it when when this humus happens like when is humus is formed now the decomposition is at an extremely slow rate right so basically being colloidal in nature it serves as a reservoir of nutrients and it is further degraded by different set of microbes and releases the inorganic nutrients which again occurs by the process which is known as mineralization right so let's see this flow chart as well once here what is happening is basically there is a tree right so this is a tree which is growing in the soil now a green leaf falls off right now some of this leaf some as you can see some parts are missing now so some part of this leaf is eaten by what by insects say right now some of it right so some of it is left so some nutrients leach into the soil so then after that some nutrients leach into soil right now further decomposition happens so further decomposition happens by detritovores like earthworms then we have bacteria mites fungi right and then again this is partially consumed now this leaves are partially consumed by whom by decomposers decomposers right and they begin to lose form and they become litter right and again now that is again decomposed to even simpler compounds and then is humified and mineralized right so guys this is the entire process of decomposition now guys there is one more thing that this decomposition is basically a new oxygen requiring process so the rate of decomposition is controlled by the chemical composition of detritus and chemical factors right and in a particular climatic condition decomposition rate is slower if detritus is rich in what if the detritus is rich in either lignin or chitin so say if you know there is a protein covering present right a lot of proteins present like lignin and chitin then the de decomposition rate is slower and if we have water soluble substances like say sugar or something that is rich in nitrogen the decomposition rate is higher right in similar way temperature and soil moisture are also important climatic factors that regulate decomposition through their effects right so basically warm and moist environment favor nutrition and if there is 
or in an environment where temperature is very low right and and anaerobiosis inhibits decomposition so basically very low tem temperature is there it will inhibit decomposition right of all these biomass right so there are a lot of factors which influence this process which influences this process right so guys with this we have finished both productivity and decomposition and in the next video we are going to cover energy flow so i hope you would have understood both the topics if yes please do like the video and share it with your friends and guys if you have any doubt in this particular topic please do not hesitate in asking your doubts you can either mention your doubts in the comment of this video or you can message your doubts on whatsapp and the number is given in the description of this video and yes guys if you are new to this channel and you have not subscribed to the channel yet please do subscribe to it and press the bell icon to get all the updates that i'll be posting on my channel thanks for watching this video guys take care see you in the next video bye bye